So uh, now I'll, I'll get started. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, now I will uh, talk about the, the uh, yeah, actually my, my, my talk is about the interactive streaming data analytics by the uh, Flink on, on Cipling. So um, um, before I give this talk, I'd like to just give me uh, give a brief introduction of myself. Um, here is but just my uh, clear path. So I always looking back from looking back at my uh, past clear path. I always feel lucky that uh, I always do on um, data related things, including uh, developing the uh, core uh, core execution engine or building data platform or data application. And uh, I would say that there's two keywords in my clear path. One is the data because I always do uh, data-related work. Uh, another keyword is Apache, uh, because I, I feel lucky that I involved in Apache project very uh, very early, around, the, uh, I think a lot around the, uh, 10 years ago. So now I'm an Apache member and uh, several Apache uh, project PMC. So now let's get back to uh, today's talk. So um, today's talk, I will have uh, four parts. So uh, first, I'd like to talk about um, Data analytics. So, and second, I will talk about uh, uh, the Flink. Uh, Flink is also an Apache project, and uh, also, uh, and uh, and the third is about the Cipling. Uh, and finally, I will uh, give you a summary of of today's talk. Okay. Uh, first, let me. Uh, yeah, let's talk about uh, um, data uh, data analytics. So, actually, uh, in my opinion, there's two kinds of um, data analytics. One is uh, his historical data analysis. So in the historical data analysis, all the data is uh, is batch, and uh, yeah, actually, of course, these these data are historical data, and uh, the uh, the results or the matrix you get from the uh, data analysis are usually are static, so they will never change. And the second kind is the uh, real time data analysis. So um, so real-time data analytics is arising recent years because I think uh, most of your work or most of, uh, I may, maybe 90% um, of current uh, data analytics are historical data analytics, data, data analytics, but I think the real-time data, data analytics is uh, arriving, arriving, arising recent years. And the real-time data is usually in the form of streaming and uh, you are consuming the uh, consume the uh, real time streaming data and uh, do uh, real time data analysis. And usually, the real time data analysis, the, the matrix is dynamic. That means these uh, these data will uh, these results will change over time. And this is uh, this is my my uh, today's talk's focus. So I will talk about how we can do real time data analysis by two Apache project, Apache Flink and Apache uh, Sibling. So, uh, so what is required for the uh, streaming data an analysis? So there's two things we need. Basically, um, first, the, it's, it is a streaming engine. So streaming engine is used for the uh, computing, processing the streaming data and the computing the, uh, computing the matrix. Uh, here I will choose uh, uh, Flink as the streaming engine. So Flink is the Apache project, which is focused on the streaming processing. And the second tool I'd like to choose, and uh, second tool we need is the analytics tool. So uh, because the streaming, uh, Flink is just a, a stream uh, execution engine. So it is used by the, uh, the purpose, it, 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 its target use is the software engineer, it's not, it, it cannot be used by the uh, data analytics people because it, it, it will not be so easy for them to use. <laughs> so, uh, so that's the reason why we uh, needed the, the analytics tool. We need to use the, uh, uh, we need to use uh, uh, such kind of tool uh, for the data analytics people. Uh, here I will choose the Apache Sibling. So Apache Sibling is a notebook project 
and the user can write code and execute on the notebook. And uh, here I will um, talk about how we can use such tool and compile with the Apache Zeppelin to do streaming data like this. So um, first, let's talk about what is Apache Flink. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So overall, Apache Zeppelin is a framework and a <clears throat> distribution execution a process engine for the stateful computation over unbounded or and un and the bounded data stream. And here I have a diagram to uh, demonstrate the uh, uh, the the, the uh, the scenario of how we can use Flink. So basically, uh, we can check the uh, left side. Usually, uh, Flink will read the data from a uh, lot of uh, sources, such as uh, transaction log, or uh, web logs, or IoT devices events. So after that, the Flink engine will computing the uh, events, uh, processing events, in such as it will be a clean um, to do, do some kind of data cleaning and uh, data uh, data normalization or data uh, data enrichment and after that it will on the flink we will write the data uh, write the result data uh, for different purposes for example it it may be uh, write the data for the uh, um, by consuming by other um, data application or it can write data to a database or file system that could be used to building a real-time data warehouse. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, basic uh, idea of what is Apache Flink and uh, how it can be used. So um, for the data engineer, how can we use the uh, Flink? Basically, Flink provides a uh, full programming language interface, Java, Scala, Python, and SQL. And uh, here is one example that how uh, we can use uh, we can use Flink to do a uh, word count example. So word count is a very typical uh, example that we uh, use in, in Flink. And uh, here is a screenshot of the Java code. You will notice that uh, even it is a very uh, easy, it is a very simple example of a word count but it will usually, I believe it will involve more than 20 lines of code, 20 lines of Java code. So that is not, you know, I think that it maybe it is not easy and uh, not difficult for the software engineer to write such Java code, but for the um, data analysis people, they will feel that, wow, it, 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 I think they will feel it, it is too difficult for them because the data analysis people, they were like, Python or SQL. I think these two languages are their favorite uh, choice. So, uh, so that so usually Java and Scala is not not the right choice for the uh, data analyst people. And uh, secondary, um, for the Flink job, it will be if they use the Flink without any other tools, it will be very difficult for them to deploy the Flink job because usually you, you, usually they have to use the uh, Flink share command to uh, deploy that. That would, of course, that is not uh, easy for the data analysis people. And the third is that um, even they write the such kind of Java code, they cannot uh, visualize the data because for the data analysis people, um, Visualization is a pretty important for them. Without visualization, they cannot. It will be very difficult for them to find the uh, data insights or, 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 or data value from from that. So uh, yeah, and and here I'd like to talk about the SQL client. SQL client is a tool that provide uh, shipped by the uh, Flink, and uh, you can run uh, SQL on on the in SQL client. But to be honest, the SQL client has two um, uh, two weaknesses. Yeah, the first is that it is still hard to config because uh, if you are not Flink expert, you usually you you cannot figure out how to config this tool. And the uh, secondary is that the function is very limited. Um, 
for example, the most important thing, visualization. Uh, so the client cannot do data visualiz visualization. You cannot see charge. So, um, so that means the, the function is not enough for the uh, data analysis people, right? So that's the, uh, that's the reason that I'd like to uh, introduce to you the uh, Apache Zipling. Um, yeah, next I will talk about uh, what is Apache Zipling and how that how Zipling can help us to uh, to do the real time data analysis. So first, uh, what is Zipling? Uh, Zipling is a web based notebook that enable data driven interactive data analysis and collaborative documents with SQL, Scala, Python, and more. So here is the uh, screenshot of what is Zipling. And uh, from this screenshot, you can see that we can write code and run code in the Zipling. And uh, besides that, we can also uh, see the results uh, in an interactive approach. And uh, you can visualize the data in Zipling without writing any JavaScript or HTML code. Yeah, that will be pretty important for the data analysis people because uh, with these tools, they can just focus on the data and focus on the business. They do not need too much, uh, too much uh, knowledge about the, the, the front end knowledge and the back end knowledge. They just uh, focus on the business and focus on the domain, domain knowledge, yeah. Okay, um, yeah, first let me talk about the uh, Zipping architecture. So that will help you to understand uh, uh, how Zipping can help us to uh, to do the real time data analysis. So basically, uh, Zipping has three layers. On the left side is the client. Usually, the client is the uh, browser, and the browser will communicate with the Zipping server via two approach. One is WebSocket. Uh, Another approach is uh, REST API. And Zipling server is some kind of uh, web server, which is responsible for uh, managing the interpret and managing the, the nodes. So the interpret is, uh, I think it might be the most important concept in Zipling. And the interpret is the pluggable component that you can use to integrate with any tool. For example, here I list uh, three uh, interpret, Flink interpret, Spark interpret, and GDBC interpret. Uh, that means you can run Flink code, Spark code, and GDBC, use GDBC to connect any database. So um, of course, uh, Zipling has a, has a lot of interpret besides these uh, three. Uh, so if, if, you, if you want to, um, if you want to check the details, you can check the Zipping uh, official website. So next, let me talk about the uh, how we implement the uh, how we integrate Flink on on Zipping. So basically, um, here is a diagram to demonstrate how how that works. On the left side is the Flink interpret. In the Flink interpret, there's two basic components: Scala shell and Python shell. So Scala shell is, uh, uh, is a component that can compile your Scala code, run your Scala code. And the Python shell is responsible for the, to compile the Python code and compile the, uh, run the Python code. And uh, actually the Scala shell is the entry point of the Flink interpret. And in Scala shell, it will, it will create several built-in uh, variables such as the execution environment, string execution environment, and table environment. Python shell will also create such um, such um, Python variables, but underneath the, the they will share the Scala shell and the Python shell will share the same execution environment, string execution environment, and the table environment. On the right side is the uh, Flink cluster. So the Flink uh, you can take the Flink interpret as the Flink client that is responsible for. Um, Submit the Flink job and control the Flink job, and the just and the on the, the the Flink cluster on the right side is responsible for to run the Flink run your Flink job. Okay, um, now let me talk about 
on several main features of uh, Flink on Zeppelin. Uh, here I just list uh, three, uh, six main features. The first, um, the first is about the multiple language support. And the second is the multiple execution uh, model. Third is the high integration. Uh, the fourth is about the uh, third party dependency management. And about the next is about advanced job control. And the last is uh, streaming data visualization. So next I will talk then, uh, I just will talk uh, several of them because um, time is limited. So I just choose the most important features to, uh, to talk about. So first is about the uh, multiple language support. So basically in, uh, in Zipling, you can, uh, you can, you have three uh, languages. You, 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 you can write three uh, kind of uh, language to, uh, to run your Flink job, uh, Scala, Python, or SQL. So uh, in Zipling, uh, the multiple language support uh, um, does not only mean that you can write these three, uh, three different languages. The most important or the magic thing here is that uh, you can collaborate between these languages. So uh, the reason is that, as I mentioned before, and I also highlight it here because the, the underlying reason is uh, the underlying uh, reason is that the Scala, Python, and SQL they share the same several different in uh, variables such as the execution environment, string execution environment, table environment, and also the catalog. So that's the reason we can collaborate between these languages. So uh, what what does the collaboration mean? That, um, let me give you uh, two examples. One example is that uh, you can write Flink UDF in Scala, and then you can use that UDF, use that Scala UDF in Python language or in SQL. And similarly, you can write UDF in uh, Python language, and uh, you can use that UDF in Scala or in SQL. So, this is a very unique feature that is supported by the uh, by Zipling, because uh, I don't think there's any other tools that can 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 do that. So, uh, and uh, if you are if you have some such kind of requirements that you want to uh, write, uh, you can you want to collaborate collaborate between different languages, then then this is a right choice for you use. Yeah, use Flink on Zeppelin. Uh, yeah, here actually I have already uh, uh, mentioned that that the, the multiple language supports. So that means multiple language in one Flink cluster and the cross language operations. Uh, okay. So the next thing is about the multiple execution model. So. Um, Currently, there's three um, three kind of execution models supported by uh, uh, by Zeppelin. The so first is a local local model. Uh, local model means that uh, you just uh, you just start a mini cluster in the uh, in the local machine, and the job manager and the task manager is just running as a, a separate thread. So this is pretty. Um, uh, I think this is the simplest way to try Flink on Zeppelin. So you don't need to set up any Flink, uh, Flink cluster. The second model is the remote cluster. The remote cluster means that there are already a uh, Flink cluster running and you'd like to connect that cluster from Zeppelin. Such as, uh, for example, if you uh, have already started a standalone Flink cluster, and you can um, connect to that Flink, uh, standalone Flink cluster in Zeppelin via the remote model. The third, uh, the third model is the Young model. The Young model means that you can create a Flink cluster in the Young cluster, and then you can you can uh, submit job to the to this cluster. Um, the first, uh, the next class. Uh, execution model is uh, Kubernetes, but uh, actually it is not imp implemented yet. 
and it is in progress. So the sibling community is trying to, uh, to do that in the next release. So the third thing, uh, the next feature I'd like to talk about is the third party dependency management. So um, it is very common to add a um, third party dependency to, to Flink, uh, especially if you'd like to uh, read or write data from on other uh, sources or things. So for example, um, you'd, you'd like to uh, read the data from Kafka and the right data to uh, Elasticsearch or something else. So uh, it is actually, it is, if you use IDE, uh, it is very important, uh, it is very easy for you to add, add a third party uh, dependency. Uh, so how can we do that in, in Sibling? So um, actually there's two approach. So the first approach is the, uh, by, by the uh, configuration of fling.execution.packages. So here is the one example that you can use this configuration to specify the dependencies you'd like uh, uh, you'd like to include. Uh, actually, the, 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 this kind of approach is very similar to the uh, to the approach you add a dependency in in Maven in the uh, Maven's Pong file, and uh, um, it will underneath it will also uh, download the package from the uh, Maven repository and uh, add them to the class pass. So the second approach is by the fling.execution.jars. And uh, this approach is, um, you can use this approach in, in, two, um, in two cases. One case is that your dependency is not deployed in the uh, Maven repository. So you have to use this approach. Uh, so the second case is that uh, if um, you don't have in internet access, so you so you cannot download the uh, download package from the uh, internet. So then, in this case, you can also use the fling dot execution dot jars to specify the jar file explicitly. Okay. So um, the next feature is about the uh, advanced uh, job control. So. Um, basically, it says, um, so the advanced job control means several things. So you can configure your job and you can submit your job. And after submission, you can monitor your job. And uh, then you can cancel your job and resume your job. Uh, the last thing is to resume job from same point or checkpoint. Yeah, this is, um, this is uh, very special for the thing, uh, streaming job because for the streaming job, save point and checkpoint is pretty important. Um, the next feature is about the streaming visualization. So the streaming visualization, um, there's actually there's three kinds of uh, visualization you can do in uh, in Spring. The first is single, second is update, third, uh, third, uh, third is append. So let me talk about then uh, one by one. Uh, yeah, so, so first thing is uh, the about self mo first thing about the single model. So the single model means that uh, your circle will always produce single low results. And, and the, in such case, we can visualize the uh, results by the uh, HTML. So here is one uh, example. Um, here, here's the example. I just uh, select the total count from the uh, from a uh, from a table, and uh, I will display the result by the HTML. You can see uh, here is the uh, template, right? The template I uh, the template is 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 the HTML template, and uh, the, uh, the here here is the uh, placeholder. So you can see the result here. The result is, is refreshing uh, every, uh, by default, it will refreshing, uh, yeah, yes. Here, yeah, actually, I specify the refresh interval as one second, right? So um, the second, uh, second uh, visualization model is the update model. So the update model, uh, 
can be used in, in the case of that uh, you have multiple low output. So here is a uh, uh, very similar uh, circuit uh, statement. Here I just use the group by. So you can see that uh, I will produce multiple uh, uh, multiple loads, right? And the output will be updated continuously. And you can see the result is, refre is refreshed every two seconds. And the, uh, the next model is about the uh, streaming video uh, append model. So the append model uh, can be used uh, in the case that the output data is always appended. Um, so here is the one example that I use the uh, Tumbleweed. The Tumbleweed uh, with the Tumbleweed is about uh, uh, five seconds. So every five seconds, I will create a window and calculate the uh, calculate the uh, the start time status and the count. And I here I will use a line chart to visualize the uh, uh, the data. Okay, uh, so now let me give you a demo. Yeah, so uh, let me uh, first let me give you a brief introduction of Zeppelin. So here, here it is the Zeppelin, and uh, when you open Zeppelin, you can see see this, uh, see this page. So this is the home page of Zeppelin, and uh, here let me give you. Here is the interpreter. In this page, it will list all the available interpreters. And let's go to the Flink interpreter. And here you can just configure the Flink interpreter. So um, uh, for the Flink interpreter, the only thing uh, is to configure the Flink home. The Flink home is the photo that point to the uh, Flink distribution. So here I just use the Flink 1.11. And uh, um, besides that, you don't need to do anything unless you would, you would like to try some other uh, advanced features. So um, yeah, now let's get back to the uh, notebook. And uh, let me try this one. So the Flink here, here is a very, very basic example that how to run the uh, what account? So there's two examples. One is the batch what account, another is the uh, streaming what account. So yeah, let me uh, let me first yeah let me first try to stop that because otherwise we will have some uh, issues. Yeah, mm, because because there's ton uh, port conflict. Yeah, I, I I don't have much time to explain that, but. Uh, Let's try, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So now it is running. So the first for the first time, it will uh, it will take um, a bit too long because uh, because underneath it will create a mini cluster. So uh, as I said, we the mini cluster will run the uh, job manager and task manager in the uh, uh, in the current process by the thread. So. Um, yeah, just wait for a few seconds. It is, it is running. Okay, we can see the output, right? So that means it is running. Okay, now we can see the Flink job link. Right, we can click that. It will it will bring you to the Flink Flink UI, and you can see the uh, job details here. Now let's get back to the notebook. So here you can see the result. Right, this is uh, batch work on the results. Now let's uh, let's uh, try this streaming work on example. Let's try that. Okay, yeah. Now, since we have already started the uh, mini, will be much faster here. So this is the uh, result of the streaming output. So you will notice that the, um, the streaming output is a little different from the batch uh, batch word count. So um, 
the, the, the difference is that for the streaming word count, it will also produce the middle result. Right? You can see the, uh, try to look at the, the hello. The hello one, hello two, hello three, right? So it, it, it will, uh, for the streaming word count, it will, it will not only produce the final, final result, it will also uh, produce the uh, middle output. So this is the difference between the batch and the streaming. This is also a difference between the uh, historical data analytics and the uh, real-time data analytics, right? Okay, now uh, let me give you uh, another example. Um, yeah, here. So in this example, I will just uh, try to uh, do some data, uh, real-time data analysis based on the uh, web log. So here I will just uh, simulate a web log uh, while I customize the uh, source function. So in this source function, I will, I will simulate some um, web events. Uh, so here I will have uh, three, three kind of page, the home page, the search page, and product page. And I will just try to uh, uh, visit each page in in this uh, in this uh, function. So and uh, finally, I will just register that source function as a as a as a streaming table. The table name is log, and uh, we have fields time URL. So now let's run this. Oh, I I think I forgot one thing. Yeah, never mind. Let's, okay, yeah, you can see that. Yeah, could, could not create dispatch. Yeah, let's scroll down, yeah. So this is root cause, right? Could not start report on H O. So, uh, so the reason is that uh, in the last example, I have already uh, start um, Flink mini cluster. So the support, H O H H O H one is already being used. So I have to choose another port. Otherwise I will hit this kind of error. So now let's um, let's try to stop the last link mini cluster. Then let's get back to here. Okay. Yeah, watch again. Okay, now this time we are supposed to uh, we, we are supposed to run this code, this piece of code collectively. Yeah, just wait a few seconds because um, because for the first time it will launch the uh, mini cluster, so uh, it will just take uh, take a few take a few more minutes. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we can check this. Yeah, yeah. We can check the uh link web. Um, let me check. Um, I think it checked. Maybe something. Oh, my laptop is stuck. Sorry for that. Um, I hope. Yeah, let me restart it again. Okay.
yeah, doing demo is always a risky thing. <laughs> Okay, let me try that. I think I just stuck again. What's going on? Oh, I can launch here. Try, maybe try. All right. Oh, yeah. Anyway, this is my. Plan B, yeah, yeah. So here I can see the, uh, actually you can see the result, right? So here it is HTML uh, output. This is my, uh, this is the template I, I specify. So uh, this is, uh, this is the query. So it's, it's a very simple that I just try to get the total, uh, total page view. Now let me try another example. This is, this kind of, so this, this is the uh, type equals to single. So that, that means the, it always gets single, uh, single row. And uh, here it is the uh, type equal to uh, update, update mode. So I can see, uh, you can see the multiple out, uh, multiple rows output. Now, um, yeah, you can see the result is refreshing, right? And uh, this is the table, um, table um, output. You can, uh, we can also check the, uh, uh, bar chart, but never mind. Sometimes the bar chart cannot display it correctly. So in that case, you need to uh, cancel that and uh, set it correctly. Set because sometimes, uh, because sometimes zipping is not so clever to infer the uh, how to uh, how to uh, set the um, set the bar chart. Yeah, now, yeah, try to look at the number here, it will changing, right? Now, uh, here, we we not only can set the uh, type, we can also set as other configurations such as the parallelism. Now, uh, yeah, we can check the, uh, the fling job here. So by default, the parallelism is one, right? Now, if I want to, Change the parallelism. Okay, it is starting line. Now let's let me click here. Okay, you can see that the parallelism is changed to two, right? Now, uh, so here the example is we do that in in the pure SQL, right? The pure SQL language. So if you the and so besides that you can also do the uh, do that in Scala or in uh, in Python. So here is a one example that uh, you run the uh, SQL in Scala language and uh, also visualize it in Scala language. You can just try to use uh, C dot shoe. C is the uh, uh, built-in variable for the sibling. Uh, it is uh, you can take it as a utility. Uh, Variable to uh, to visualize the uh, for some advanced feature. Now, um, yeah, we can run this the Python. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, job is running. We can check the details. Okay. Ah. 
you see the created, right? So that may means I don't have enough resources, maybe. Yeah, let me get back. Um, so I need to cancel the several jobs so that I can enough, I can have enough um, results for running the, the following two, two quarters. Oh, right. Okay, now we can have, yeah, this is a Scala example, right? And this is the, uh, this is the Python example, okay? Now, yeah, so this is a demo. Now let's get back to the, uh, the slides. Okay. So yeah, so now let me give you a, a summary of today's uh, talk. So uh, first I talk about the uh, data analysis. So two, two kinds of data, data analysis, historical data analysis and uh, real-time data analysis. And uh, then I talk about two projects, Flink and Zipplin. Flink is a streaming execution engine and the Zipplin is the an analytics tool. So there's several uh, important features that Zipplin can help you to do the real-time data analysis. And uh, besides that, I, I, here I list several, uh, uh, several links for, uh, for more uh, advanced, uh, for more materials about how how you can check the details of use Flink on Zipplin for the uh, streaming data analysis. Okay, so today, so this is uh, my talk today. Thank you, everyone. Now let's get back to the Q and Q and A. Um, so, okay, yeah, and Flink. So, how can we do the Q Q and A? Should I stop sharing? So if there's no Q&A, I will uh, stop sharing and uh, thank you everyone.